In this video, we'll go over cards which no one expected to be good when they first came out, but ended up seeing lots of play. And at number 10, we have Cup of Ace. This card has the effect where you can flip a coin, and if you get heads, you draw two cards. But if you get tails, your opponent draws two cards. So basically, it's a gamble card where you go plus one on the good effect, and minus three on the bad effect, so no one really used it because that negative effect is really bad. And that's how it would continue to be, a card no one used but in Duel Links. This card is good enough to be on the semi-limited list, because the whole meta in Duel Links is just so different, with the lower life points, the lower opening hand. Getting off the heads effect of a single cup of ace was sometimes enough to win you the duel with certain burn decks. And so, a card that could instantly win you the game if you simply got lucky on your first turn was kind of a problem, so Konami had to put it on the semi-limited list to really control the luck-based nature of burn decks, as well as limiting a whole bunch of other cards that let you win on your first turn. And even then, Cup of Ace still gets played, as there's a skill in the game that allows your first three coin tosses to always be heads, which just turns Cup of Ace into a pot of greed in that deck. And at number 9, we have Metaverse. This is a trap card with an effect to search out a field spell card from your deck, or activate it straight from your deck. Now, when this card first came out, people thought it was just a worse terraforming, a spell card which allows you to search out any field spell from your deck. Basically, because terraforming exists, anything that had an effect to search out a field spell card had to be better than terraforming for decks to even consider playing it. And Metaverse was just a worse terraforming, as having to set a trap card and then wait a turn to activate it in order to search out another card, is just worse than getting to activate a spell card directly from your hand for no cost. And then something happened to the game. Two cards were released afterwards that retroactively made Metaverse just as good as terraforming, if not better, in certain situations. One of them, called Trap Trick, which is a trap card that allows you to search out any normal trap card from your deck, and then activate it that turn, and a field spell card called Mystic Mine. A field spell with such a good lockdown effect that it basically counters nearly all of the top meta decks by itself. But it has a restriction where it destroys itself based on the number of monsters on the field. So, you couldn't really activate Mystic Mine during your first turn and then pass to your opponent in order to lock him out of monster effects, without Mystic Mine destroying itself. But with Metaverse, that allowed you to activate it directly from your deck during your opponent's turn which is better than terraforming in that kind of deck. And Mystic Mine was so good with Metaverse, and Trap Trick made it so easy to search out Metaverse, that they just straight up limited Metaverse to one. They also limited terraforming to one as well at the same time, just to show that terraforming was still very powerful as well. It's just when Metaverse first came out, no one really expected it to outperform terraforming in any deck. Although, even then, the card was still a straight up search anything from your deck, so uh, it was still kind of good. That's why it's only the number 9 spot on this list. And at number 8, we have the Winged Dragon of Ross Sphere Mode. Now, before this card came out, the Egyptian God cards were kind of a joke in the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! community, as they're a very, very popular archetype. One that was completely broken in the anime, which is not very good in the actual game. Despite that fact, they still remained very popular in the actual game, on the more casual side of Yu-Gi-Oh anyway. So, when they released new support for the Winged Dragon of Raw, in the form of giving him a Sphere mode as well as a Phoenix mode, to better showcase its anime effects, people didn't really pay it too much mind. And in fact, some people just thought it was a worse kaiju, since it requires three monsters instead of one. Because what this card does, is you can tribute three monsters from either player's side of the field in order to summon this card. And then you can tribute this card to special summon a Winged Dragon of Raw from your deck with 4,000 attack and defense. And this card is nowadays one of the most played side deck cards because the ability to tribute three of your opponent's monsters is actually super good in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! where the current meta is all about setting up a board of monsters who can negate anything you want to do. Because if you tribute the monsters for sphere mode, they can't respond to that tribute with a negate. They just lose their monsters and then get a zero attack monster in return. And since it can tribute three monsters, it can more readily get rid of a whole bunch of hard to get rid of monsters at once. Whereas kaijus can only get rid of one at a time. And at number seven, we have Brilliant Fusion. 
This card has the effect where you can use materials from your deck to fusion summon a Gem Knight fusion monster, but that card will have zero attack and defense. Now, this card was played so much in so many different decks that the most used card with Brilliant Fusion, Gem Knight Garnet, is now the card known for having a dead card in your hand. And in fact, if you have a dead card in your hand and you refer to it as a Garnet, people will know what you mean because of how prevalent Brilliant Fusion was before it got limited to one. And funny enough, when this card first came out, no one was really using it, because the best way to use Brilliant Fusion is to bring out Gem Knight Seraphonite, and sending Gem Knight Garnet plus one light monster from your deck to the graveyard. And in doing this, you gain a monster on the field, a double summon due to Seraphonite's effect, and a selective mill of a light monster to the graveyard, of which there are a lot of great targets. So this is so much value from this one little play, and that's why it saw so much play. But no one really used it until I think a Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus deck used Brilliant Fusion Engine in order to turbo out Great Magnus. And since this one card, not part of the Super Quantal archetype, was the reason that archetype was able to be successful for that tournament, that really got people to notice how good this card was. And then all of a sudden, everybody was using it to the point where it got limited for being too useful. And at number 6, we have Solemn Judgment. Funny enough, Solemn Judgment came out in one of the earliest sets of the game, and rarely saw play. Despite the fact that it's considered one of the strongest trap cards nowadays, and spent years on the ban list. Because what it does, is it allows you to pay half your life points to negate the summon of any monster or negate any spell or trap card effect. It's basically pay half your life points to negate one of anything, which is a really good effect, as a single negate can completely disrupt an opponent's strategy and win you the game. But back when this card first came out, rarely anyone was using it. And that's kind of because the game back then was just a lot slower, where even if you could negate one key part of your opponent's strategy, it was difficult to get enough monsters on board to OTK your opponent consistently, Whereas basically any deck can do that easily nowadays. So you couldn't really take advantage of the negate as easily as you can today. Kind of. This card is a point of contention in the GOAT format community, as the GOAT format only uses old cards from that one format in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh! And since Solemn Judgment existed back then, people played in the GOAT format. But, no one was playing Solemn Judgment in the actual days of the GOAT format. It's kind of like using future knowledge of a card being good in an old game. So it can be seen as kind of an advantage. Now, that doesn't really matter. Solemn Judgment is still a really good card even today in the current meta. And the reason it doesn't see very much play is just because many decks don't use trap cards. Because they'd rather have that card in their hand be something that could extend combo plays than setting something like Solemn Judgment. Although I should mention it does absolutely see play, just, you know, not in like every deck. And at number 5, we have Mudragon of the Swamp. Now, this is a level 4 fusion monster who has an effect to help your monsters become untargetable to card effects. It's a neat effect, but that's not why people play this card. The reason this card sees play is because of its fusion materials. This card requires any two monsters with the same attribute but different types, which is really good when comboed with a card like Super Polymerization, a card that lets you use your opponent's monsters as fusion materials, and that's recently come off the ban list completely, and is an excellent way for people to get rid of problem cards on their opponent's side of the board because Super Polymerization is spell speed 4, so they can't negate it. And Mud Dragon of the Swamp is just a really good card to use with Super Polymerization, as it allows you to have a wide range of different monsters you might come across. And that's the true value of this card. Literally, it's combo potential with Super Polymerization, and that's it. If they banned Super Polymerization again, then no one's going to use this card. But because Super Poly is in the game, and because it's so good against the current meta, people are playing this card, and it's entirely dependent on the status of Super Poly. And at number 4, we have Mass Driver. This is a continuous spell card with the effect to tribute one monster in your side of the field to inflict 400 points of burn damage to your opponent. When this card first came out, people thought this card was terrible, as getting rid of one of your monsters for only 400 points of damage was not at all worth the trade-off. 
400 points of damage is basically just a double sparks, a card infamous for being terrible. And Mass Driver is currently banned, and I can't see it ever coming off the ban list. And here's why this card was considered bad when it came out, and considered so good today. And that's entirely just because of the evolution of the speed of the game. Back in the day, when this card first came out, it was incredibly difficult to special summon one monster during your turn. The meta was to tribute a summon skull, and then use that to beat over your opponent's monsters. In a slow meta like that, there is no way to take advantage of Mass Driver. It wasn't until Substitoad came out, along with Swap Frog and Ronin Toten, that decks finally got to the point where they could special summon a ton of monsters in one turn, which worked really well with a card that can tribute them for burn damage that had no once per turn restriction on it. So in order to FDK your opponent with Mass Driver, you just needed to use its effect 20 times. And special summoning 20 cards during your first turn in the old school days of Yu-Gi-Oh! is just not happening. But a frog deck with Substitute can easily and consistently special summon 20 monsters in one turn. Of course, Substitute is banned, and they usually get rid of loops that allow you to special summon an infinite amount of times during your turn. And there's even cards like Cannon Soldier still legal in the game that can do what Mass Driver does only on a monster effect. But those are kind of balanced by the fact that you need to get that monster on the field, whereas Mass Driver is a continuous spell card, so it's much easier to use for the same effect. And even in the OCG, all of the Cannon Soldier-like cards are banned anyway, because being able to tribute an unlimited amount of times during your turn for burn damage just opens up too much potential for decks that can win on your first turn. And at number 3, we have Super Rejuvenation. This card's kind of like Mass Driver, in that it existed in the game for a long time, and no one ever used it. Until the Dragon Rulers came out. And Super Rejuvenation has an effect, where you can draw cards equal to the number of Dragon-type monsters you discarded or tributed during the end phase. And since Dragon Rulers are all about discarding a crap ton of Dragon Monsters from your hand, Super Rejuvenation was basically turning into a Spellbook of Judgment for Dragon Ruler decks. And Spellbook of Judgment is one of the most broken cards of all time. So, they banned Super Rejuvenation for allowing you to go plus 6 during your end phase. Or even more sometimes, as you could go above the hand size limit and be completely fine with discarding your extra cards to the graveyard. As Dragon Rulers are all about using the cards in your graveyard as a resource anyway. But then they banned all the Dragon Rulers, and without the Dragon Rulers in the game, Super Rejuvenation isn't really that bad. It's really only that one archetype that can take advantage of it to the degree that allows you to go plus 6 during the end phase consistently. And that's why this card is unlimited in the OCG, where they literally only have one Dragon Ruler unbanned, and limited to one. Because it's not that big of a deal outside of Dragon Ruler decks, but it still gets a high spot on this list, because in Dragon Ruler decks, this card is incredibly broken. And at number two, we have Ancient Fairy Dragon. This was a synchro monster that existed for a really long time, and was one of the five main dragon synchro monsters from the 5D's anime, and was always considered the worst of the bunch. Because what it does is it allows you to destroy the field spell cards, and then add another field spell card from your deck to your hand, as well as gain 1000 life points. And it also has an effect that allows you to special summon a level 4 lower monster from your hand, at the cost of giving up your battle phase. Giving up your battle phase is a pretty hefty cost for special summoning a low level monster from your hand. So, most people never use that first effect because it was kind of bad. Back then. And also back then, field spell cards weren't very good, and most archetypes had their weakest card of their archetype being their field spell card, as it would usually just give them an attack boost or something else mediocre. So, being able to destroy them and then search out another one just wasn't a big deal. But then, kind of like Mass Driver, the meta of the game shifted, Konami started printing field spell cards that were actually the best card of the archetype, as many of them allowed you to go plus one when activating them, or gained effects if they were destroyed. And this card allowed you to special summon a monster from your hand, which is super valuable in combo decks. So the combination of both of these effects on an extra deck monster, which means you don't have to search it out from your main deck and can go into it as long as you're able to go into a level 7 synchro monster, made this card incredibly good. And broken in certain decks that could search off their field spell cards being destroyed, or could just go plus one when they were activated. And it got to the point where some decks could win on their first turn with a single card from their hand 
basically because Ancient Fairy Dragon existed and allowed them to pull off incredible combos. And that's why Ancient Fairy Dragon got banned. It's just too good of a combo extender now. Which is ironic because none of the other five main dragon synchro monsters from the 5Ds anime are on the ban list in any way, shape, or form. So it went from being the worst of the bunch to the most broken of the bunch. And at number one, we have Grinder Golem. Now, just like a lot of other cards on this list, this card existed in the game for a long time and never saw any play, and in fact was thought of as kind of a joke card because its effect was kind of bad. Because what this card does is at the cost of your normal summon, you can special summon this 3k beater from your hand to your opponent's side of the field. And in exchange, you get two tokens with zero attack in attack position. So basically, you were giving your opponent a strong monster, losing your normal summon for the turn, all for two tokens with no stats that were forced into attack position. So this card was almost never played, and only really saw success in gimmicky Infernal Tempest builds. Although, I don't know if you can really call those successful decks. But then, Link Monsters were added to the game. And Link Monsters allow you to bring out extra deck monsters with tokens. And there were a few Link Monsters that could return Grinder Golem to your hand from your opponent's side of the field. And since Grinder Golem only locks you out of your normal summon for the turn, not from special summons, a single Grinder Golem could be special summoned from your hand many times to grant you a Link 4 monster easily, while also getting the Grinder Golem back in your hand. So basically, without losing any advantage and only giving up your normal summon for that turn. And Grinder Golem was so good, it was basically a staple card in every single meta deck that could use Link Monsters, because there is almost no reason not to play Grinder Golem with how much advantage this one card could give you. And then the card eventually got limited to one, and everyone was still playing it in every single deck. And then the card eventually just got banned for still being too good. Grinder Golem is like the poster boy for this list, a card that was basically thought of as a joke, becoming one of the most played staple cards in the game overnight, because it just happened to interact very well with the new summoning mechanic. Alright, and that's the list. If you think there's any other cards I missed that should have made the list, or have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comment.